Foreign-made UAS and critical UAS equipment have been added to the FCC covered list. Now, going forward, new models may not receive the approval required to be legally imported, marketed, and sold in the United States. That doesn't just affect DJI and Autel. It can affect any foreign manufacturer, and it includes also more than drones, gimbals, transmission systems, and anything that needs FCC authorization. Whether you support this or not, it actually will reshape what operators can buy, repair, and rely on. Now, the question is, how big of an impact? So today, we can answer that question with data. Because now we have data, not just the truth-bending statement from a DC lobbyist that's never flown a drone, who's telling us that, well, you know what, it might hurt and it might sting for a few months. We actually have the largest data set on this issue, real data directly from you, the community that uses these drones. Day in, day out, the response was overwhelming, with over 8,000 respondents taken from all corners of the industry and the hobby as well. We can estimate industry-wide proportions with 99% confidence within about 1.4 to 2.5%. To put that in perspective, we had more respondents to this survey than the lobbying organization pushing for these restrictions has for members. Let that sink in. Now, this industry is strong. 450,000 remote pilots as we are recording this video, and a little over 1.2 million recreational pilots based on trust certificates that have been issued to date. 1.7 million people that are flying drones in the United States. And that's on the low end, I think. And I want to be clear here about something that's, I think, very important. It is absolutely, absolutely possible to, one, be against a ban or an interdiction of any kind of drones, two, to enjoy your foreign drone and think that it's actually a great platform, and three, to also wish that we had strong American drone manufacturers and strong manufacturing capabilities in general. None of these statements are mutually exclusive. You don't have to pick a camp. And yes, there are actually more than one or two US manufacturers that you hear about all the time in the news. And many of them that we don't hear about a lot are innovating and pushing the boundaries without actually trying to legislate. And no, this video is actually not about DJI and Autel. It's actually about the drones that people use, the drones that are available, the drones that may not be available anymore. It's about potentially losing the tool that over 97% of responders said that they own at least one model of. The tool that 90% of drone pilots said comprise at least half of their fleet. And a tool that 7 out of 10 drone pilots reported is the only brand that they currently use. And these are not just recreational pilots. We asked folks all the things that they do with their drones. And many of them did more than one thing. A third of all respondents fly recreationally. Half of them also operate a business under Part 107. And some of them do both. 30% use a drone as part of their job for their employer, including public safety. This is a very varied industry. We know this. We talk to people every single day about what they do with drones. And as expected, many, 43%, use their drones primarily for photography and for videography. We know that this is what made drones so popular. 15% use them for construction, inspections, mapping, and surveying. Almost the same amount, 13%, use them for public safety. These are your firefighters, your police officers, search and rescue team, and many others that are involved in life-saving activities. 11% use them for recreational purposes. That includes parents, grandparents that are helping their kids get involved with this hobby. And of course, drone pilots are also involved in real estate, utility and infrastructure inspections, agriculture, and even education. Like I said, a very diverse group of people. And the folks that are at risk here are not just the people that are getting started. Over a third have been doing this between three to five years. A third have been doing this with three to five years. 17% have done this for six to eight years, and 20% more than eight years. Only 8% have actually done this for less than a year. Those are the folks who build a business, who feed their family with it, and are about to, well, get hurt quite a bit. And we're not talking about just small businesses either. We have two-thirds that are sole proprietors. That's kind of expected. But also 15%, 15%, that's the second largest group represented here, work for organizations that have 50 employees or more. 
And one out of three of these businesses drawn account for at least half of their revenue. I'm going to say that again. One in three in these businesses, the drones account for at least half of their revenues. But you might be wondering, how did we get there? Well, in 2024, while well, there were only talks about potentially adding DJI and Autel to the covered list, these companies started facing some issues with the United States Custom Border and Protection Agency. That's the CBP for short. CBP cited the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act and asked DJI to prove that they were not in violation a request that DJI has been trying to meet ever since. As a result, CBP blocked most of the shipments of DJI equipment and prevented them from entering the country. And months later, DJI even announced that they would no longer offer care refresh since they could not guarantee to have drones or even parts. Another byproduct of all of this, the last three DJI drone models that were released worldwide, well, did not make it into the United States. And as you might expect, the effects of these policies were actually felt through our communities. A third of users reported that they could not get the needed DJI parts or accessories that they wanted. 42%, that, that's a big number, reported that they could not purchase a specific model that they wanted. 21% at the time said they had no issues with DJI availability, at least at the moment. And of course, starting in 2025, the United States significantly increased the tariffs on Chinese-made goods, amongst other products. And as a result of these actions, 45% of the drone pilots reported that they experienced significantly higher prices of drone and parts. And as you can imagine, when drones are so integral to your business, not having access to the drones or the parts can really affect the bottom line of your business. While 23% said that the CBP action had no impact on their business, 78% did. That's up to 350,000 people that could be affected. 18% lost jobs or contracts, 21% had to delay jobs and deliverables, and 38% said that it has made their work more difficult. So how much money did they lose? Well, it ranged from about less than $1,000 to up to $50,000. And as you can see, and as we predicted, this is unfortunately hurting our hardworking business owners. And I hear you already, you might say, well, the solution is pretty simple, just buy something else. Well, 29% disagree with that statement. Those same 29% who said that they already evaluated alternatives, but could not find a model that fits their need. And those are the folks that have a Mavic, an Air, a Mini. These are users that we have discussed so many times before. Those small business owners and recreational pilots who have no other options. And 29% was the average across the survey. And when we looked at this with a microscope in more detail by types of use, then we found that the number increased to 35%, from 29 to 35% for those that are in construction, inspection, surveying, and mapping. And 34% for those that do real estate. And 33% for those that are in utilities and infrastructure. And then finally, 32% for public safety users. All of those well above the 29% that we just talked about that was kind of the average. So to answer the just buy something else argument, well, it's just not that simple. And for about a third of users, switching doesn't seem like it's in the cards at all. The same number, 14, 15%, both of them said that they have evaluated but have not made the switch or that they have not evaluated but plan on doing that very soon. Now, you might think that the cost of these alternative platforms is the barrier to entry. And yes, you'd be correct. That's at least what almost two thirds of the industry are reporting. By the way, this question is where we get the second most number of responses, over 13,500 answers, 13,500 answers out of 3,600 respondents. So as you can imagine, multiple issues here were reported. Another two thirds also said that lower performance was a problem. More than half also cited that software reliability and maturity was a problem. More than half also said that the features they depend on are just not there. Limited ecosystem was also cited by 39% of respondents as being a barrier to switching. And the rest of the issues were limited to local support and services, 21%, long wait to delivery and training time and training cost, both of those being 18%. Now, there is no doubt that we are entering a new era for the UAS industry. As of December 22nd of 2025, the United States announced that, well, the following. The U.S. government executive branch interagency body is referring to the FCC covered list 
all UAS produced in a foreign country unless the Department of Defense or the Department of Homeland Security makes the specific determination to the FCC that a given UAS or a class of UAS does not pose such risks. It is unclear at the moment what specific determination is going to look like and if it will be an audit like the one that DJI and Autel, well, never really got or if it's gonna be something else. And this too is going to have some deep repercussions on the industry. 41% of the industry can continue operating their current DJI fleet for up to one year. Another 44% can stretch it to two years. Not being able to buy newer drone models means a significant negative impact for one third of the users and an extremely negative impact, one that's potentially business ending for 43%. Think about that again. 43%, look at these numbers right here. That's going to significantly impact three quarters of the commercial population. Well, by my numbers, that's 340,000 people. When we dig deeper here into who specifically is going to be the most affected by no longer being able to buy newer DJI models, well, it's pretty clear. At the top, public safety agencies, followed closely by real estate, and then utility, infrastructure, inspection, agriculture, and construction, inspection, surveying, mapping, all into one, all of them facing significant negative impact. And if you're an American drone manufacturer watching this, you have two years, it sounds like from the data, to R&D a Mavic, an Air, a mini replacement, and make sure that you manufacture it at scale and make it available to, well, the hundreds of thousands of people that are ready to buy them. For months now, we have been saying that this is going to cost people their businesses. This is the most unfortunate, I told you so, because, well, 24%, 24% of the industry says that they will shut down their drone-related business if a DJI ban is implemented. And I'm gonna say that again, one quarter, one quarter of drone-related businesses could close as a result of these actions. Even if you forget about expanding the survey data to the entire industry, that's 928 respondents in our survey alone who say that they will likely shut down their business. 928 families that are affected by misguided policies. Is this really the sting that those lobbyists are telling us that we have to endure? Or maybe the sting is to the other quarter of business owners who said that they're going to continue operating, but with higher cost and lower margin or higher cost that is going to get passed down to customers, contributing to inflation and also making drone services less competitive than, well, possibly any other alternative. But that's not it. 17% said that they would reduce drone work and 11% said that they would shift their work away from drone to other services. Also, one in 10 said that they would invest heavily in non-DJI alternatives. But you might be thinking, isn't the goal of all of this to actually grow the UAS industry and make it stronger in the United States? And yes, on paper, it absolutely is. But when over 80% of the industry is either extremely concerned or very concerned about potential federal action that could restrict or ban DJI drones in the United States, this cannot be good for what's coming. And even worse is the breakdown of who is most concerned about all of this. And at the top, utilities and infrastructure inspection pilots, followed closely by public safety. I don't need to remind you that these are the people who use drones every day to save lives. So this begs the question of whether a ban on future DJI products would slow people down from investing into drone technology, whether it's equipment, hiring, training, or really anything else. And the answer is a resounding yes. 61% will significantly reduce or cancel future investment. Let me say that again. Almost two thirds will significantly reduce or cancel future investment. And another 20% said that they would somewhat reduce their investment. Only one out of 10 said that they would increase their investment in non-DJI equipment. Let's hope that that's enough to make up for, well, the eight out of 10 that are not going to do this. So when it comes to policies, what do people actually want? What, what would people, if they could vote on this, what would they vote on? Well, a good policy here, when it comes to dealing with DJI, the answer is pretty clear. Half of them think that no additional restriction on DJI beyond the current rules should be applied. And this survey predates the FCC action. So current rules here means, well, let those drones basically fly. 47% said that there should be targeted restrictions only for sensitive government and critical infrastructures. And that's quite frankly, kind of where I stand as well. Only 2% said that there should be broad restrictions on new DJI purchases. 
uh, but still allow for the fleets to continue operating, which is kind of what just happened. And less than 1%, I think it was 0.7%, said that there should be a full ban on DJI drones in the United States. That was 31 respondents in our survey. I actually didn't realize that AUVSI had that many employees. Now, personally, I believe that the industry is where it is today because affordable drones and reliable drones made it easy to enter the hobby. Drone pilots, engineers, salespeople, designers, even some full-size aircraft pilots get started with affordable drones. And I'm not the only one who thinks that. 85% believe that affordable consumer drones are important for getting new people interested in drones and aviation. Another 13% think that they are important, but not essential. So tell me, where did you get started? Are you part of the 80% of the industry who got started with a DJI drone? I did. Proud Phantom 1 user, here, that's what I had, and then eventually sold it, and then used something else. Without an alternative to the DJI Mini, the Air, the Mavic series, are we going to see a decrease in the number of people that enter the industry and the hobby? You bet. And it's not just me saying this. 84% of the industry agrees that the number would decrease significantly. Can we afford a decrease in the next generation of people interested in flying drones, designing them, building them, selling them, teaching drones in the classroom? I think the answer is no. The implications of these policy changes are far-reaching. And this is not just a sting, it's a structural hit. And the people absorbing this are not the lobbyists in DC. It's the community that actually flies. If you want policies that are smart, not sloppy, then this data needs to be seen. Share this with a pilot, a business owner, a journalist, a decision maker, heck, even with a lobbyist who need to know the facts. And drop a comment, what do you fly and how long can your fleet actually last? Thanks for watching.